Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am going to do an overview video today of one category of makeup. Let me know, depending on how this goes, if you want to see other categories of makeup in the same format. So I have a folder on my laptop that says video ideas. And whenever one of y'all makes a comment asking for a specific video or making a suggestion about a specific video, I will screenshot it and put it in that folder. So I was going through that folder the other day and this honestly, years old. Like I can't even, I do, it doesn't have a date on it so I can't say when it was, but it's been in the folder for a while. And someone asked, for a video going over all of the different powders and why you need them, when you need them, what makes a buffing powder different than a touch-up powder, what makes a loose powder different than a pressed powder, and on and on. And I know there are a lot of different <laughs> categories of powder when it comes to makeup. So I have six different categories that I'm gonna go over and then show you some of my favorites within each category. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna start out with the first powder that I put on my face, which is the powder to set my under eyes. I get asked a lot whether or not I choose to use a different powder to set my under eyes than I do for my entire face. And the answer is yes. I find that my under eyes need a different powder than I typically choose for my face. The under eyes are very thin skinned. And in my opinion, should be set. I know a lot of people don't think that it should, but for me, it has to be set because otherwise, the creases and the cracks and stuff, it just, the concealer moves around way too much and it just becomes a hot mess <laughs> throughout the day. So I do set my under eyes every day and I look for a couple of different things, either something that is marketed specifically for the under eyes or a powder that maybe I have tried for my face and was not exactly what I look for. Maybe it didn't mattify my face enough or just didn't really set my face like I wanted it to, but is super finely milled. And those are the powders that I choose. So I have three right here. I'll mention a couple of other ones that I don't have with me, but love. The first one is one that I've used for a very long time and it pained me <laughs> because I bought a brand new one. It fell on the floor and it just obliterated itself. I mean, yeah. Not, not usable right now. I may end up trying to press it back in with some alcohol, but this is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. So again, one that is specifically marketed for under eyes, meaning that it is going to be finely milled, meaning it's not gonna be cakey, it's not going to really give coverage, it is going to be very lightweight, but still do the job of setting. There, this comes in various colors. Even though it doesn't have coverage, Depending on your skin tone, you will benefit from one color versus the other. And that is something that sets this apart from the other ones that I'm gonna talk about. So if you're someone who wants something specifically marketed for the under eye, they want the options for different shades, definitely look into this. I also love the Ilia Soft Focus, or yeah, Fade Into You Soft Focus Finishing Powder. This says finishing powder. To me, it's a setting powder and I prefer it under my eyes than on my face. I don't dislike it on my face, but it is very, very soft focus under the eyes. It's blurring, It you don't need a lot at all to set the concealer and it lasts all day without aging the under eyes. So this one is my current go-to. And then another one that I've used in the past and liked is the NARS Translucent Crystal Powder. I have a little baby size. I think I have the full size in my drawer. I should have gotten that out. But this is the one that I keep kind of on my vanity with my under eye setting powders. This is one of those ones that is like you can really dig into it and still not get a ton of product. It has a little bit of reflection in it, which I actually like for the under eye. And it is very, very, very finely milled. So another good option. Laura Mercier has an under eye brightening powder that I really like and have used for many years in the past. And then the Hourglass Veil Powder is one example of one that I don't prefer on my face and I can't pinpoint exactly why other than I don't love it for my face, but I really like it to set the under eyes. So that is kind of 
my favorites on the under eyes. If you don't want to try any of those, honestly, I just suggest looking for something that is marketed for the under eyes or is finely milled. And you are going to find more finely milled powders in the loose form, in my opinion, than in the pressed. So let's go into setting the face. I have a lot of powders, some that I absolutely love, some that I like and I don't reach for a ton, some that honestly I'm wondering why they still are in my drawer, but I do have some favorites. And I'm gonna start out with the pressed version of a setting powder for the face. Now, this is not a blanket statement for all pressed powders, but a lot of pressed powders are going to not be as finely milled as the loose counterpart. A lot of them tend to have coverage. Like if you want a setting powder that has coverage, you're going to find more options in the pressed variety than you are the loose. And they are just more convenient, in my opinion, than a loose because they're not as messy. You're not having to tap out product and all of this and it getting everywhere and then making sure there's none left in the cap before you put the cap back on. It's just a lot. Now I love a loose powder, but it is more convenient for a pressed. I will not say that a pressed is more mattifying than a loose because that is not the case. There are mattifying loose powders and pressed powders. There are luminous loose powders and pressed powders. So I have a couple of options that I love. Another kind of blanket rule that I would try and remember is if you get a baked product and it will either say in the marketing copy whether or not it's baked or you can tell because when you open it it has kind of a rounded top to it that is in my experience not going to be as mattifying and it's going to be more skin like and one of my favorites is the mineralized skin finish naturals from mac this is a baked product it doesn't have a dome right now because I've used so much. In fact, you can see some of the pans starting to show through. This is in the shade medium dark, and this is exactly what it says. It is a skin finish. It looks like skin. It is not going to alter the finish of your foundation. So if you're wearing a luminous foundation, it will stay luminous. If you're wearing a matte, it will stay matte. It is a skin layer going over your foundation to help it not move throughout the day. One of the best baked products in my opinion. If you want something more mattifying, something that's going to really blur the pores and also take away any shine from the foundation, keep you shine free throughout the day, there are a lot of options in the pressed category as well. And one of my favorite is the Too Faced Primed and Poreless pour blurring and mattifying face powder. Again, in the marketing copy, you've got to read the names of these things. They will most likely tell you what they are intended to do. And this one is intended to blur the pores and mattify the face. And I find that it does that very well. And to prove that you can definitely get a luminous finish with a pressed product, definitely look into the Armani Luminous Silk Glow Setting Powder. Again, it tells you what it is meant to do. And this does impart a glow, but it also sets the foundation perfectly, in my opinion. I really like that. You could see I have hip pan I need to repurchase. And then finally, my favorite setting powder of all time, this is my third compact that I just opened yesterday, is the Air Perez Corn Translucent Setting Powder One for All. This, in my opinion, does mattify a little bit, but it is one that mattifies at the beginning, but then honestly looks more natural as the day goes on without letting your natural oils seep through, if that makes sense. It works with every single foundation I have ever tried it with, and I absolutely love it. So honestly, as far as why you would pick a pressed powder versus a loose powder, because of the advancements in formulas and how you can get a matte or a luminous or an in-between in both categories, it comes down to convenience for you. If you don't wanna mess with a loose, there's so many options in a pressed. There are some people who absolutely believe loose just looks better on the skin, especially as we age. And that's fine. I have many favorites in the loose category. If you do want a more mattifying look to the skin. I love the Lancome Long Time No Shine. Now with loose, there's really no one way to, to use it and not. You just can either take whatever is in the top or put some out on the cap. 
put a big fluffy brush and then just stipple it onto the face. This one is not the most finely milled powder that I have ever used. However, it really does take down the shine. It doesn't look heavy on the skin. It's just there are more finely milled powders on the market, but you can tell I'm halfway done with this. I do really like this for something that will take down the shine and keep it down throughout the day. If you are someone who likes a more luminous finish, there is, there's two that I'm gonna talk about. And this one is from Say, and it is the Aeroset Radiant Loose Setting Powder. So again, you're gonna know right off the bat looking at the name, you're not gonna get mattifying from this. This is very skin-like in my opinion. It's kind of the counterpart to the MAC Natural Skin Finish in the pressed in a loose version. Really, really pretty on the skin. It does have a little bit of radiance to it, but it's not over the top. I've definitely used more powders that are more radiant than this, including the Lancome Absolute Powder. This is not as easy to find. It is still on the Lancome website. I think you may be, be able to find it like on Nordstrom and Nima Marcus, but this is one that does come in different colors and the colors do show up. It's not like a translucent color like the Pat McGrath under eye. So you might wanna like research what your color might be. This is absolute pesh and that's perfect for me. And it does have a little bit more radiance in it. This is beautiful on more mature skin. If you didn't hear that, I said beautiful. It's really, really pretty. Okay, really pretty. So worth tracking down. And then if you just want something that is going to just set the face, Blur, this is very blurring in my opinion, but not really alter too much the finish of the skin. And that is the Fit Glow Beauty Blurring Bamboo Hyaluronic Loose Setting Powder. So it is also hydrating, it's not drying. None of these that I've talked about are drying on the skin. So again, it comes down to preference, but as far as which one works best on what skin, you are gonna be able to find a formula in either one that works great. Now let's talk about buffing powders, or some people call them finishing powders. This is probably the one that I get the most questions about, and it is a step that I do every single, well, I would say 99% of the time, every time I do makeup. And I really only have two favorites, but that is not to say that there are not other good ones on the market. Now, for me, I prefer a pressed version, even though one of the favorites isn't pressed, I don't reach for that as much though. I just feel like the pressed is very easy. I really get in there with my duo fiber. And if you've seen any of my makeup tutorials, you will see that I just really buff. This is after I have finished my entire face of makeup. And I will go in and buff so that I don't have any harsh lines from my bronzer or my highlight or my blush. And it, everything just kind of melds in. Now, you can do this with a completely translucent powder if you prefer. I know some people have said they like to use the La Mer Loose Powder, which was reformulated. I have not tried the new one because I'm still bitter about it, even though it's been years, because the old one was a favorite of mine. But I don't think there's any question as to what my favorite buffing powder is, and it is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. To me and my experience in the many years of me trying different buffing powders, nothing beats these for that step. In my opinion, full stop, period. Like, they're just the best. <laughs> and my go-to is Radiant Light. That is what I use, again, 99% of the time. It's what I use today in all of my makeup tutorials. I do have some other colors that I want to show you. This, I have dim light in my kit. I think I also have ethereal light. I pulled this one out too. This is diffuse light. Now, this is for my very fair skinned clients. Um, or if you want something to set your under eyes, this is also really good pressed powder for that because it is so incredibly finely milled and it really just imparts a filter on the face. So even if you don't have very fair skin, this might be an option for you to set the under eyes. And then another one that I don't even know is available anymore. This might've been um, a limited edition. It's the Ambient Lighting Infinity Powder. And this is good. It's not my favorite. I don't love it as much as the Radiant Light because this does have visible specks of glitter in it, at least when I swatch it. It's not too much, it's not all over the place, but the Radiant Light doesn't have that at all, so I just reach for that a little bit more. And then finally, for my other favorite, this is the Guerlain Meteorites 
pearls. This is actually in the gold pearls. I'm not sure if this is limited edition. They do a lot of limited edition shades in these, but they also have the standard that's always in their collection. And I will still use the exact same buffing brush, just swirl it in here to pick up the product and then continue to buff my face. I like this color because it imparts a little bit of warmth, same as Radiant Light, but I do not reach for this as much as the Hourglass. It still gives a beautiful finish. It's just not Hourglass, <laughs> but I do like it and I do have it in my collection for a reason. Now let's talk touch-up powders. I don't specifically own any powders that are marketed for touch-up. I think maybe Fenty has one. There's a couple of brands that have powders that they market for touch-up to suppress the oils or, you know, kind of act as a blotting paper in powder form. I don't have that, but I do have two powders that I absolutely adore for touch-up and use all the time. I have one that I keep at my vanity and that is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish. This is also a great setting powder all around, like the middle of the road, good with everything type of setting powder. But this one I keep at my vanity along with my Jane Ardell Flock Sponge. And I've shown this in makeup tutorials before, but I will take a little bit and press it at the end of my makeup if I have some spots specifically in the middle of my face that are a little too shiny for my preference. If I've used a really luminous foundation, if I maybe use the wrong powder with the wrong foundation and I just want a little bit more mattifying in this inner portion of my face, this is what I reach for. It's great to carry in your purse. The only thing I will say is that these are very fragile. So I choose not to carry it in my purse for that reason. If I were to drop it or knock my purse on something, the likelihood of this breaking is higher than other powders. So keep that in mind. But this is a great touch up powder for me because it does mattify a little bit, but it also diffuses and it has oils in the formula. So it is not going to dry you out. I could put this on top of itself 50 times throughout the day and it will never look too cakey or too dry on the skin. So that is why I choose this one because it is pressed and that is my favorite form of a touch up powder. It's easier for me to use on the go and also because of the formula. Now, the one that I keep in my purse, and this is the second compact, I always, always, always have it in my purse and use it most of the time on the daily, is the La Mer, it's rubbed off, it's their press powder. And this is in the shade translucent. This is not the puff that it came with, but I've had to replace that over the months. But this is fabulous. It's sturdy, it holds up, I have dropped it, it hasn't cracked, and it just, takes away any of the shine just like that. You don't need a lot of product. This will last you forever and it just works every time. It's very finely milled as well. Could reapply it on top of itself all day. That's the theme with touch up powders. Find you one that you feel like the formula allows you to put it on top of each other and on top of each other and on top of each other all day long with no issues. That to me is what makes a perfect touch-up powder. Now that is the majority of my categories. There is one more category that I'm gonna talk about that is in powder form, even though it's not for setting or buffing, and that's powder foundation. Now I have done an entire video on powder foundation. It's been a couple of years, but I will still put up a card in case you wanna see it. And I have many, I love powder foundation. I think it is very, very underrated. I think people are scared of it because they don't, they see the word powder and they think it's gonna be dry and cakey and just a mess on their face, especially as we get older. And that is so not the case with the majority of powder foundation formulas out there. It is easy, it is fast, it is beautiful, and I cannot recommend powder foundation enough. I have so many favorites. So many, but I pulled out a couple to show you the differences, again, impressed and loose. Now, typically, again, it's not a blanket rule, but typically if you get a loose powder foundation, they tend to be a little more luminous than the pressed counterparts. And that is what I have found in my collection as well. So like the Inica Loose Mineral Foundation, to me is a little bit more luminous than their pressed powder foundation, but no less beautiful. The Bare Minerals 
original foundation, this is a holiday packaging from a couple of years ago, is more luminous on my skin than their pressed. It's also not as easy to use as the pressed because again, you got to knock it out into the cap and you know put it in the brush and really buff it in it can tend to go everywhere and you know a long time ago maybe it could have been said that it's worth it because press just doesn't look good on the face that's not the case now there are so many beautiful pressed powder foundations and not all of them are more matte than the loose but as a rule i would say if you're wanting something with a little bit more luminosity to it if you have maybe dry skin and you just don't want anything that's going to be halfway mattifying i would look in the loose section of powder foundations that's where i think you're going to find your best fit now as far as pressed again the formulas are beautiful i don't have any pressed that is so mattifying it looks bad on the face but they are a little bit more so than the loose. This is, you know, an OG for a reason. This is the MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation. This is in the shade NC30. This is my personal shade. I have four shades, I think, in my kit that I very often use on clients because this is gorgeous on the skin. It provides fabulous coverage, but it doesn't look dry or cakey or heavy. And it's a staple and an original for a reason because it's just beautiful. And then I can't not talk about my Jane Iredell Pure Pressed. I have a whole video on this, absolutely love it, and most definitely does not look matte or dry or cakey on the skin at all, nor does one of my very favorites, the Chantecaille Compact Makeup, which is also fabulous for all skin types in my opinion. It is very, very skin-like, does not look cakey, nowhere near drying, but it also is definitely more expensive than all the rest of the ones that I've talked about. So if you want to go on the less expensive side, there are so many good options. There's even good options at the drugstore. I just want you to take away the main difference being the loose can tend to be more luminous, the pressed can tend to be more normal to demi-matte, semi-matte, to matte. But in my opinion, there's a time and a place for all powders of all formulas in all categories. And I hope this was helpful. If I missed anything, please let me know down in the description box. I will have all the powders that I've talked about linked down below. Please know you don't have to use all of these. You do not have to set your face. You do not have to set your under eyes. You don't have to use a powder foundation. You don't have to buff. And you certainly don't have to do all of them within the same makeup routine. But I do like to tell you all of the options so that you know what you could possibly be working with and then choose what's best for your own face. So if you have any additional comments or questions that I may not have touched on, please leave them down in the comment section. I will have all of the products that I talked about listed and linked in the description box below. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And please don't forget to always write your suggestions and recommendations for future videos because I do read them all, I do take them to heart, and one day I will get to them. So thank y'all so much and I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.